Now, some breaking news for you. NASA's team has recommended a no-go for launch to the director of the Artemis 1 moon mission just hours before it was expected to blast off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Well, these are live pictures of the NASA rocket on its launch pad. Well, the launch was cancelled last week due to engine problems. Well, Alan Fisher joins us live now from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Alan, what do you make of this? Well, we should know in, in a very short order of time whether or not this launch is going to go ahead. They've been having problems over the last few hours. To get the rocket off the ground, you've got to mix liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Liquid oxygen, there's been no problem filling the tanks. There has been a leak as they fill liquid hydrogen. Uh, that has, they've tried to fix it. They've tried at least three different fixes. And now the team there has recommended to the launch director that they scrap this for today till they try and get to the bottom of it, particularly as the launch window is approaching. It's only less than three hours away now. Uh, and so the launch director has decided decided to take that advice and then we'll make a decision very shortly. It would be a big disappointment to the thousands of people that have gathered here on the Space Coast in Florida hoping to see this mission, which of course would be the first step in taking humans back onto the moon. There would be two other missions after this before that actually happened. But people here were hoping that they would see a moon launch. It looks as if because of this slight problem it's not going to happen. Of course, the big question is then when can it be done? Now, if this can be fixed quite easily, obviously more easily than doing it where it is at the moment, then they would hope to be able to get the rocket up into the air in a launch window that they've got on Monday. They might have to make the decision that essentially the rocket has to be wheeled back into the workshop and that could well delay everything until mid-September. But things should become clearer in the next, hopefully, 10, 15 minutes. Certainly we, we expect uh, to get some sort of uh, clarification within the next hour. And Alan, how much of a setback would this be for NASA if indeed they have to wait till September? Well, look, they've had problems all the way along. Uh, th th this has been delayed. Uh, COVID delayed the, the, the whole process of building the units that they needed. And then there were other issues that ran massively over budget. Would it be a problem? It would be a slight glitch. But I think overall NASA and the administrators are looking at the big picture about how important this mission is, how important it is to establish a base on the moon, which Artemis 3 would do sometime, they think, around 2025 if the current time scale were to be followed. So it would be a glitch. It would not be a welcome glitch, but there's absolutely no way they would approve a launch when they're not 100% certain that everything will go smoothly. So uh, hopefully we'll get some sort of clarification, as I say, in the next hour, but it's not looking good for the. They've tried a couple of solutions to fix this leak. It's on the outside rather than the inside. Uh, when plan A didn't work, they moved to plan B. They then tried plan C. Someone who's at the Space Center said Plan C was essentially Plan A slightly modified. That clearly hasn't worked, which is why they're saying, look, the launch today might not be a good idea and they can take 48 hours and have another go at it. And how bad does this look for NASA image-wise then uh, if it doesn't actually happen yet? Oh, yeah, the breeze is very... Well, I think people understand that, 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 that there can be glitches with these things. You're talking about massive rockets. There are so many systems that have to go uh, exactly right. And, and everyone remembers the disaster of the, the Challenger Space Shuttle. No one is going to take any sort of risk if there is anything that could possibly cause a problem. Uh, so NASA would much rather say, look, we'll wait another day and, and go again, rather than do something that, that could uh, really set the whole program back by a significant amount of time. So it's really just a case of, of working through the process, finding out what the problem is. The people at NASA are really smart people, like really super smart. So if there's a problem there, they should be able to find a solution. It's just whether or not they'll be able to work that solution within 48 hours or we need something more significant, something more substantial and take the rocket back and essentially pull apart the part that needs to be looked at and get it all done from scratch and then look again at a much later launch. All of that we're hoping will become clear very soon.
indeed. Well, for now, Alan Fisher, thanks very much for that update. Well, going to the moon is about more than just exploration. It's part of a new international space race to exploit lunar resources. The focus is on the U.S. right now, but other countries are investing in their own missions. Russia has announced plans to withdraw from the International Space Station to focus on its own interstellar goals. That includes putting humans on the moon by 2026. China is targeting 2030 to put people on the moon. It's also planning to build the very first lunar base in collaboration with Russia by 2035. And India has already sent two unmanned missions to the moon, and it's hoping to send a third lander next year. The United Arab Emirates, which opened its space agency eight years ago, plans to send a probe as early as November. Well, Farouk Elbaz is a former NASA scientist who worked on the scientific exploration of the moon and the planning of the Apollo program. He joins us from Washington, D.C. Well, well, first of all, what do you make of this uh, situation with the Artemis? This is perfectly normal. The, uh, the NASA engineers at Cape Canaveral for launch would not allow anything to, uh, to occur or to continue if there is a potential problem. So this is, this is very good for them to make absolutely certain that the, uh, the uh, rocket is in perfect condition and, and to allow the launch on time. Are we now in a new space race, though, do you think? Yes, we indeed. We are in a space race since uh, China is now entering in a big way. China has been thinking about it for a while, but has not really entered in, into the space program in a big way. The Soviet Union was. The Soviet Union was the leader, remember, in 1957, in, in, in November 1957. Uh, okay, the, the Russia sent the very first satellite into Earth orbit, was called the Sputnik. And so Russia was leading, and then America led by, through the Apollo program. And now China is entering this scheme. And Russia, well, China wants to say we are as good as anybody else, if not a little better, because they want to land on the far side of the moon and they want to do all kinds of other, other things. So China is entering the space program in a big way. I understand that you worked on the Apollo program all those years ago. I mean, do you still feel that sense of excitement now? Indeed, because we were working on the Apollo program and uh, all of the engineers were working uh, very vigorously. And the, the, the battle cry at the time was, go do this thing and do it well and do it fast. Do you want the Ruskies to beat us? That's the way the engineers talk, meaning go and do this thing and do it to absolutely to the best possible way of doing it because you don't want the Russians to beat us. So there was this... Uh, competition going and it helped the program and now there will be another competitor China which is good I think competition is very good in these cases now NASA is talking about a future base on the moon to prepare for missions to Mars even is that feasible or, or just science fiction no 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 it's feasible quite feasible Kelly, because they, we, we've already shown to the world that it is possible to land humans to walk on some planetary body like the moon and to get back without no problems. They can sustain the radiation from the sun and all of these other things. And the, the, it is possible to, to think about long-term missions to the planets like Mars. So I really think it's coming someday. And with this Artemis mission, what kind of experiments will they be looking at? People say, or might say, does this benefit us on Earth? Yes, they will bring samples and they will bring water samples. And that is very important to say that there is water in a planetary body like the Moon, and therefore there may be water on Mars, and therefore we would not, be, we would not have to transfer water to any group of humans that would, would travel there um, to, to these uh, planetary bodies. So the uh, uh, availability of water is something that is new and is something that would provide additional uh, uh, impetus to go further than the moon. And what about the cost of all this, though? Is it worth it? The cost is not really for the space mission. The cost is for developing all kinds of new technology. 
the reason that I'm talking to you and you could see me in my picture and I see your picture and people everywhere in the world can see our pictures in South America or North America or in China, can, they can see us and can hear us. That did not come from somewhere in somebody's mind. That came from spending money for the Apollo program so that we would be able to see the astronauts, so it's be able to direct them, that's what they'll be able to see if there is a problem there. So all of the technologies that were developed for the Apollo mission to the moon is now in the computer business because the computers themselves, the best computer was a computer to, to can be carried on the, in the lunar uh, uh, machine so that they can actually ver verify their position looking at stars. So they're, they're to, to make the calculation, which is a very tough calculation. Now, all of these calculations can be done on any computer that you can carry in your hand. All of this came from the Apollo exploration of the moon, or the results of the, the experiments for these missions. So whatever is being spent on the potential missions to the moon and to Mars is beneficial to all human beings on Earth because it provides the technologies that we can use, like computers, like the imaging, that is, the picture that you see today, the picture that anybody can see around the world, all of that came from the Apollo research. Farouk el we very much appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.